my message that I want to scream to the rooftops is that we absolutely have to pair tact with less planner. They're like peanut butter and jelly. And so we're going to go immediately into a little game that I like to play. And uh, we're going to play the 5S games. This is how you play. I'm going to share this slideshow with you. And I'm going to get the right music on the background here. I've got my Jeopardy sounds. Hopefully it lasts. And I'm going to put 20 seconds on the timer. So I want you to count from 1 to 49 as fast as you can in sequence. So I'll just give you a hint. The bottom left over here is a 1. Number 2, let's find 2. 2 is right here. Okay, so you're going to go in sequence. You have to count one, two, then three, then four, then five in sequence. You can't skip around. I want you on your screen, as you can see my screen, to count from one to 49 in 20 seconds. And those are the rules. On your marks, get set, go. Pretty good. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Time. So that's it. Think about what number you got to. And there's a sheet that I'll show you here in just a minute. Most of the time, people at this point, they'll say, I got four, I got two, <laughs> I got 12. Oh, you did really good with 12. And then we do a reflection. And we ask people, and I'll ask you, what's wrong with this? What's wrong is that we have different size fonts. They're in different orientations. It's all over the place. We have unneeded numbers, and it's just chaotic. And here in a minute, we'll do a reflection as well, that there are project managers and superintendents in the industry that run their projects like this. So what would we do? We would, let's do something here a little bit fun. Let's get rid of the things that we don't need. So we only have 1 through 49 here. And it, the same rules apply. Remember, one is down here to the bottom left, and here's two. You want to count from one to 49 in sequence. One, two, three, four, five in sequence. And so I'm going to give you 20 seconds on the clock. On your marks, get set, go. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Two, one, zero. Okay, I just love that Taco Bell timer. In here, I would go around the room and ask what people got. Most of the time, people would say, oh, I got eight this time. I got 14. Some people would say, I got 21. And then I would ask them what their reflection is. And they would say, well, it's really nice not to have all that extra uh, number all those extra numbers and it's a little bit easier i'm starting to get used to it and i say okay that's a good reflection now what if we gave you just a little bit of organization and put lines in there so here are some lines i'll give you 20 seconds on the clock on your marks get set go 10. Okay, so if we went around the room, people would say, okay, probably I got seven this time, I got a little bit less, 14, 24, you know, not very high marks. And then we would say, um, okay, what made this hard? Well, introducing the lines in the organization kind of made it a little bit hard, and it wasn't ideal. And we say there's usually there's two or three people in the class that are like antsy. They look like they have to go number one and they're like, you know, bouncing up and down their seat and they're like, Ooh, I found something. We're like, okay, go ahead. They say, well, we found a pattern. And so there's a pattern to this where you can count faster. And so I'd like to invite everybody in the next 20 seconds to attempt to find the pattern. So on your marks, get set, go. Find the pattern. There's a pattern here that will allow you to, to uh, click through and find these numbers faster. Five seconds. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, so we've got it. Now you 
would typically hear me say, who found the pattern? Here's the pattern. Pay attention. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10, number 11, number 12, number 13, number 14, number 15, number 16. So it goes up these three and then over to the middle, up, up, and then back up, up, up. That's the pattern. And so now I want you all to count and notice the last number that you end on in 20 seconds, knowing that you have the pattern. So on your marks, get set, go. Ten seconds. This is a fun little game. If you've played it before, learn how to facilitate. Five seconds. Really good reflection. And time. We are good. Does anybody get hungry and they want to go for a Taco Bell taco when I do that? What if I did it multiple times? Anyway, so if we asked everybody what they got from this, uh, they would say, oh, I got 24, I got 38, I got 41, I got 12, I got, they would have higher, higher numbers, and they would be very, very excited because they found the pattern. Now, that's really good. How is this like construction? On construction sites, there are times when it's chaotic, then we remove the excess, then we create some organization, and then people are able to, to find and understand the pattern, and they get higher numbers, right? Uh, but this is like, and I love the last planner system, so do not get me wrong. This is like the last planner system, is that we get rid of the nonsense, we get some psychological safety, some structure, some stability, we get people working in teams, we start to get a little bit of an organization, people start to recognize a pattern where they can be successful and they get higher numbers. And so I want to anchor your mind to this when we do the reflection. Now I'm going to put 20 seconds on the clock. On this next slide, I want to see how far you can get with this one. On your marks, get set, go. We're doing such a good job. 10 seconds. And just so everybody knows, we've only got a little over 30 minutes, five seconds. So... We're almost there. One, zero, boom. There's that Taco Bell for you. Okay, where'd you get? I bet almost everybody got to 49. This is tax planning. Putting everything in sequence in a flow to where it's organized. And regardless of what the font size is, you know what everybody's supposed to be doing in any given tax time in any given week. This is what last planner and tax planning look like together. You will hit the higher numbers. Everybody that's played this, I bet you you got all the way to 49. And so it's only when we put things in sequence, only when we break things out and we put them into a flow. It's only when we separate everything by location. It's only when we take the time to create that kind of visual schedule that we're able to get the higher numbers and win on our projects. Now, there's a little bit more to this uh, scenario here. You all have played all the different ways. You know how to do it. You're competent. You know the pattern. I need some people giving me some really high numbers on this next one. So as you play this next one and I queue up the clock, I want you to commit, please, in your mind to give me high numbers. The owner needs this project done quickly. Please go fast. Count from 1 to 49. And we'll do it on your marks, get set, go. Faster. One through 49. You know the pattern. Get it done. All the way through. We need you to push through and do this the fastest you possibly can. I should probably stop talking. Stop distracting. Faster. You only have five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, I think to yourself in your own mind, what did you get to? Did you get to five? Did you get to 17? Did you get to 23? Did you get to 32? Were you really good? Did you get up above the 40s? Um, think about your number. I want you to do this next one. And I'll give you 20 seconds on the clock. I want you to do the same thing one through 49. On your marks, get set, 
Go. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, right there. We're good to go. I would go around the room and ask people what they got. Um, most people would say, well, I got 17. I got 17. I got 17. And then somebody would say, I wrote in the numbers, I got 49. And then somebody else would be like, I wrote in the numbers, I got 50. Somebody else would say 17, 17, 17. I wrote in the numbers and I got 58. The breakdown, uh, as we look at it and we go through the different rounds, this column right here is the typical breakdown that we see when we do this with teams. They'll say 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 49. I wrote in the numbers. 17, 17, 49. I wrote in the numbers. And the problem is, what about these numbers in round number seven that were higher than 17? Because if we go back and we look at the previous slide, what do you notice about this slide that maybe you didn't notice before? There is no 18. There is no 42. And if you got anything above 18, then you counted through this without noticing it. And that's not for me to be critical or for us to make fun of people. It is to trick us a little bit, but we are absolutely able to see what's going on in round number eight when we had this one. And I'd like to uh, you to ask yourself why. How long did it take you to see the missing 18 and 42? How easy was it to see it? Okay. And remember back to my point, tax planning will not solve your problems, but it will show them to you. And then think about how hard it was to see that missing 18 and 42. Even if you saw that was an 81 or were confused, you, you still didn't even see the 42. And if we can't see the missing 18s and 42s and we can't see the black gorillas, then we can't create flow on our projects because these roadblocks will interfere, they will get in our way, and they will absolutely slow down and affect our work. And so I'd like to do just a quick uh, reflection on that as we go. The key to construction, in my opinion, is that we have to absolutely have respect for people. Respect for people and resources means that we will create psychologically safe environments. It means that we'll, we will use the last planner techniques of building teams and collaborating. It means that we will listen. It means that we will listen together and make decisions together as a team instead of command and control. It means that we will care about workers. It means that we will care about project teams. And once we have that respect as the motivation for all we do, and that's why I firmly believe you have to work for owners that actually respect people. And if you have owners that respect people, they will then allow you to stabilize your project. So the second step on a lean project is stability, uh, capacity, and I'll do a shout out to Adam Hoots, capability, and flow. We have to have projects that are stable, where the team has the capacity to see roadblocks, they have the training and capability to see roadblocks, and the project is flowing in a structured way so that those roadblocks come to the surface. Problems are not a problem. Everywhere I go, and I've learned this from some of you all on this call, everywhere I go, I say problems are not a problem. Hiding problems are a problem. Everybody has problems. Every marriage has problems. Every project has problems. Every company has problems. Every church has problems. Everybody has problems. The problem isn't that we have problems. The problem is that we hide our problems. And creating a stable, capable, and high capacity flowable job site brings those problems to the surface so that we can remove them. The third thing is we have to have total participation. So if we have if we have a project site with respect and stability, then that is the only environment where everybody with psychological safety, that's not just a buzzword for me, that's serious, 
we have to have every worker being willing to and able to speak up. And Cabri's got a nice article on this if anybody ever wants it. Uh, to speak up and with total participation in a system like this, born out of respect, to truly engage in a project and solve problems together. And then and only then, and I know that I'm right about this. So if you say otherwise, nana nana boo boo, you're wrong. So it, only then, I'm just kidding, you don't have to be mad at me. So content, only then can you do continuous improvement. There are so many people in uh, consultants and people everywhere, they're like, no, 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 just go start improving things. And people on their jobs aren't participating together and there's no respect and there's no stability and it's chaos. We can never do this unless we have these other three things first. Absolute love and respect for people, stability and respectful environments, total participation working together as a team, and then and only then can we continuously improve. So you see this system, tax planner, tax planning and the last planner system with integrated control creates that environment. So it creates that environment where you can see roadblocks, where you have the capacity and time to remove roadblocks, and if you can't, it creates the schedule backbone to where you can absorb roadblocks. And that is why I am so keen on tax planning is because we have to stop crash landing projects and putting people in harm's way. And that's why I can say without any arrogance whatsoever, any project I've ever run has finished beautifully on time because I was using tax planning and I didn't know why it worked. Tax planning, you can do it the wrong way, thankfully, and still get really good dividends out of it.